your day must call in. See my Lord one night. Must I something's wrong with me? My heart's not feeling right. You never change the feeling, my son. Must I did us play? You will know the answer if you've been born again. There is no substitute. Salvation is your holy proof. If you wish to pass the gate, you must be born again. No ticket, you must buy. No place for your soul to hide. You'll be lost if you wait outside. You must be born again. Oh, the Lord has spared a person. Oh, he calls when you die. Rich men and the pauper are never in side by side. And the judgment shall reveal every deed that's been concealed. We fought the battle real. We must be born again. There is no substitute. Salvation is your only proof. If you wish to pass the gate, you must be born again. No ticket you must buy. No place for your soul to hide. You'll be lost if you wait outside. You must be born again. Oh, the Lord has spent a person. Oh, he calls when you die. Oh, rich man and the poor. Every day that's been concealed We fought the battle real We must be born again Oh, the Lord has spent a person Oh, he calls when you die Rich men and the pauper On every side by side And the judgment shall reveal
Shout it loud, hallelujah. A Jericho destroying, hallelujah. Let's close our eyes, give us our two hands to the Lord and pray for ourselves in this song. Holy Ghost, do it again, do it again in my life. Me not to giant to say if you're my humble cry why on earth hast thou art called only do not pass me Savior, 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 my humble cry. Jesus, 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 Jesus.
of Kali Yane. Complete, complete, complete in him. I am complete. Sing it loud and clear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yon, 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 yon. It's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. It's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. It's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. Oh, I am complete. Oh, yes, complete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send that fire. The Holy Ghost fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. The Holy Ghost. Send the fire. My soul, Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire, fire upon me, my soul, fire upon me, my soul, Holy Ghost and fire. Our Lord God, thou hast made thy heavens and the earth by thy great power. Our Lord God, thou hast made thy heavens and the earth by thy outstretched. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great and mighty God. Great counsel, mighty indeed, mighty indeed, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is so difficult for me. Behold, I am the, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, oh, oh, hallelujah, is there anything, is there anything to have for Jesus. There is a prayer I want you to 
cry out with violence. Say failure. failure. Assigned to slaughter my destiny. You are a liar. Die. In the name of Jesus. Failure assigned to slaughter my destiny. Command the failure to die. Papota se peti la katende kea. In Jesus name we pray. Father we thank you for tonight. Accept our thanks in Jesus name. Father lay your hands upon us. Admit us by your power. Thank you Heavenly Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Let's have a see God bless you. Tonight's message and the prayer, they are not for ordinary people. They are for people who want to mount up with wings as eagles. They are for people who want their presence to terrify the enemy. They are for people who want to pray and pray to get results. They are for people who have read the Bible and they keep asking the question. Where is that power as of old? They are for people who are sick and tired of Goliath standing before them to be boasting. They are for people who are tired of their own powerlessness. But they believe that there is still an overruling power on this earth. That there is one power that is still above all powers. And they believe that that power is still alive today. They are for people who have read the scriptures where it says Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. They are for such people. They are for people who have read church history, they read stories about the apostles, and something in them is telling them that they can manifest that power. That's why I said it in my nice It's not for everybody. Because it's not everybody who wants to be strong in the Lord. Unfortunately, what many people do not realize that that word that Jesus spoke, and he didn't expand it too much. When he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Then all other things will be added unto you. Seek that one first. Many don't understand it. Listen very carefully. There is nothing anybody can get from life if you can sit down to hear, to listen, to meditate, and to take action. The power of God is not for those who are too much in a hurry. Those who are too much in a hurry, they're not patient at all. They won't get far with God. So tonight, listen carefully. The first lamentation is this. Since the beginning of Christianity, these are our own generation that you and I are in. They are the most powerless generation so far. I mean, we are being insulted by the enemy every day. It is time for you to rebel against the insult of the enemy. It is time for you not to accept every stone the enemy is just throwing at you. It is time for you to appear in a place and the enemy will say, "Ah, ah, who is this? And they flee. They flee. It's a very serious matter. And I want you to understand it. They wanted to embarrass a man of God who used to pray for the sick. When he gets to his crusade, he will ask all the sick people to come to the altar. And they wanted to embarrass him. They brought the press. They now went and brought an old Indian lady who had died three weeks before. They took her out of the mortuary, put her on the wheelchair, and brought her to the crusade. So when the man took the altar call, they brought this woman. When the man of God saw the woman they were bringing, he said, ha, it's a serious matter. The woman was put in the right-hand corner. He started praying from the left. As he started praying, for those who were talking about headache, backache, all of a sudden, 
He had the voice of God. He said, son, it is time. Go to that woman. So he abandoned the person he was praying for. And ran quickly to that woman. He just said, father, in the name of Jesus. And the woman sneezed and came back to life. Those who brought her, they ran. They ran. There is a power as of old that you can manifest if you want, if you are ready. I'm holding a microphone here. This is a microphone. We went to the shop where they sell this microphone. We paid the price, then they gave it to us. So if you two are ready, pay the price. You may actually be the messiah that your family and people around you are waiting for but you are now a frozen fish you let's face the fact that's the truth we either believe this bible that is the word of god that everything there is true or we throw it out we are looking at the school of fire baptism the school of fire baptism what did I say? Let me hear the sisters talk. Let me hear the brothers talk. In Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Luke three sixteen. It says this. If you idea, say yes. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water there is a baptism of water but one mightier than I commit the lashet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose the lashes of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost that's another baptism and with fire. Another baptism. So in that single verse, we see three baptisms. Baptism of water, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and baptism with fire. There is something, beloved, known as baptism of fire. And as the Bible has arranged it in grades, in that grade, water, Holy Ghost, fire. Water, Holy Ghost, fire. Water, Holy Ghost, fire. The greatest headache we have, there are plenty who have received the baptism of water. There are plenty who have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There is a disheartening, scanty figure who have received the baptism of fire. Let me be honest with you. If only 10, 10 of us here have received the baptism of fire, this Lagos will know that there is a problem. They will know. But it's few. This heartily, scantily, scarce. And this is a great trouble for heaven. It bothers heaven so much. And it bothers danger so much. Why should they be so weak? So weak as not to be able to perform what they should perform. Some of you might have heard me sharing this before. A general of Asia, almost the age of my father, a lot older than me, was sharing something with me. He said he went to visit one of his branches somewhere. And when he got there, he was paying a ministerial visit. But when he got there, was expecting church members to line the street to be saying daddy welcome daddy welcome but lining the street he didn't see anybody looking like a child of god they were all wearing masquerade dresses native doctor dresses lodge member dresses those are the people lining the road the road to the church he first of all thought he had missed the road he checked the address it was correct so he drove right to the front of the church these people were there too. So he got down from his car and they went to him. Say, are you the general of of this church? He said, yes. 
Okay, we had that you are coming. That's why we are waiting for you here. Say you say here, sir. This dog that you put here, that you call a pastor, we came here to ask you to remove him. The man said, But why? What has he done? He's stolen your money or taking away your wives? He said, no. No. And since this man took over this church, all the young men who used to carry masquerade, who used to participate in masquerade festival, he has turned them to his members. Then, he has now become the richest native doctor in this town. Because the people who used to take problems to so this native doctor so that they can eat, they don't go there anymore. It's him they come to. All the native doctors are now going hungry. Some of them have died of hunger. Say so. Listen, you know, they then to hard insult to it. Two hey him. Say this man, Abolanio, is, is a spirit. They told him, he's a spirit. At 2 a.m., you wake up and begin to walk all over the street in town. He's speaking one strange language like this. And as he's speaking the language, he's pointing at people's houses. And as he's pointing at the houses, they have the heat, heat is catching them there. So, get over, sir. Say, take this, your dog pastor from here and bring back the former pastor. The man said he pinched himself to convince him so that he was not seeing a vision. He was asleep. Pinch himself. That fellow is an example of a person who had received the baptism of fire. Not just Holy Ghost baptism. He had gone a step beyond that. The baptism of fire. It's easy to carry a microphone and begin to shout prayer point. We have plenty of pastors who call prayer points who shout. But the shouting cannot replace the baptism of fire. This is the truth, beloved. I am praying that there will be somebody in this meeting tonight who will lose his temper with himself. That I cannot continue like this. Something must change in my life. And I believe that there will be somebody here who will receive that strange, mysterious baptism of fire. That will change his or life forever. If you are the person, let me hear you shout a seven fold amen. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. One sister was the first wife in a family. The husband married two other women. The husband was not born again. So he married two extra wives. Then all of a sudden this man died. And when the man died, the members of the family, they took all the three wives to a place to go and swear and drink the water they used to bathe the dead man. Because the oracle said one of them killed the man. One of them killed the man. But this first wife was a believer. So she said, I'm not going to any native doctor. And I shall not drink any cup's water. The other two said they are going. So the other two went. This woman did not go. They came back from there. So the oracle said, you are the one that killed the man. And because you are the one that killed the man, whether you drink this water or do not drink this water, you will die in seven days. The man said, okay, by the power of the God of Elijah, let anyone who killed the man die. Seven days is too long. Three days. And they said, okay, within three days, the native doctor who said she was the one, the uncle who took them there, and another person died. What was wrong with that woman? She has gone a step beyond just speaking in tongues. A step Beyond just shaking. Say, hear the word of the Lord. Has gone beyond that level. A little bit. That's why I'm seriously praying for somebody here today. That you will not go home from here the same. In the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud and clear. There is a man in this church. Maybe he's he's even in this service now. You know... (laughs) It's not often people come to the general overseer and then they talk and that general overseer is happy throughout the week. Sometimes they tell you stories of war. But this day, who was here? Yeah. Those three men, they were outside and they were making noise. Let us see general overseer. Let us see the Jew. 
and they were telling that you have no appointment. And I said, okay. If you say we will not see him, we shall burn down this place. When I heard we shall burn down, I said, who are those? Let them in. These three men now came in. I said, are you the general of Asia? I said, yes. I said, well, so you are looking so young, but that's not our topic today. I said, sir, we came here to report one of your church members. I said, ah. I said, what has he done? I said, I am the landlord. He has rented a room in our house. But since this man moved into our house, nobody has been able to attend witchcraft meeting. So because at 12 midnight, he will begin to pray, calling fire, speaking one strange language. So the whole house will become hot. All the road to go to witchcraft meeting is blocked. He said, as he was talking to me there, that his wife is on the sick bed. Because the wife did not attend witchcraft meeting and they disciplined her for not coming. What else is this man that is blocking it? He said, sir, this is the money the man used to rent the house. Give him back his money and tell him to leave our house. I said, sir, uh, are you saying that you are witches? He said, oh, yes. Ah. He said, okay. Is it very insulting? They said, no, no. Very gentle. Very respectful. Say, but immediately it's 12 midnight. I don't know what goes wrong. Say, look, 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 we are not here for discussion. Take his money and let him pack out. Bye bye. And they left in anger. I was so happy. This for the first time. The enemy is now running. I saw a church member who understood what we were teaching. Put it into practice. He said, they are running after me. They are pursuing me. They are writing me. I said, please take this man out of here. He's disturbing us. That is an example of the baptism of fire. The man has gone beyond the level of just speaking in tongues seeing small, small, powerless vision to another level. Another level. Where he has become terror to the enemy. May you become terror to your enemy. In the name of Jesus. This only happens when you have the baptism of fire. Because fire has no respect. Fire is very domineering. Fire has no time for argument. Fire has no respect for forces of gravity. Fire is very aggressive. Fire has controlling power. Fire is very mysterious the way it moves. The baptism of fire. The baptism of fire. So one of our greatest needs today is to find men and women who have received this particular baptism. This our weak, ineffective, and powerless Christianity cannot make any impact on our generation. We need that baptism of fire because demonic activities are now everywhere. Everywhere. And it's very sad. Everywhere. In those days when I used to take invitations to go to churches, I was invited to a church in London. <laughs> and I got there. If you see the uniform of the choir, it was heavenly. All elegantly dressed. They look neat. Very nice. Until prayer started. When prayer started, the pastor was embarrassed. Because the first person to tear away the choir gown was the person conducting the choir when prayer started. If that is happening in a church, because everywhere demon activities have taken over. The only thing they are afraid of is men and women with this fire baptism. Listen to me well. I have a covenant with God. If you touch me. You go and try to hurt me or harm me. You die. It's a covenant. The MFM has the same covenant too with the Almighty. That is, if you are a true member, our true member, there are plenty of people who come here who are not members of Mountain of Fire. We call them external candidates. Because they are still painting their lips, hanging their chain, 
wearing their dangerous trousers as women. They are still committing their fornication. They are still doing all kinds of terrible things. They are not our members. They are just coming here to make our hallelujah very loud. If you are a true member of Mountain of Fire, part of the covenant that establishes this ministry, if you do any harm to any member of Mountain of Fire or to the church as a whole, the Lord will treat that person like a rag. It's not prayer. I'm not praying. I'm telling you what happened. There have been men in this country who have risen up against the mountain of fire. Those who are not dead have been embarrassed or disgraced. It's a covenant. That's why it's very sad when somebody is coming to this church and you're not serious. We are coming here, you are taking part of our teaching, you are dropping the one that is not convenient for you. Demonic activities are everywhere. Even unbelievers know that. You were here when that woman was giving a testimony. That armed robbers came to her house. They took plenty of things. They said, where are your jewelries? I don't have. So how can you, a woman, not have jewelries? Don't use it in our church. Don't use it. Then one of the armed robbers saw the bag she brings to church. And saw our logo there. He called his ogre. Scorpion, scorpion, scorpion. Scorpion, come, come. Look at the bag of this woman. One look, say, ah, madam, you go to this church? Say, yes. Say, I see. No wonder you say you don't use jewels. Say, now call all his boys. Yeah, the phone you took, put it down. Money, put it down. Everything, everybody, drop everything. Drop it. The now said, madam, keep your mouth shut. Don't shout. But please, say this after me. We did not take anything from your house. Say it after me. We did not take anything from your house. So when we leave this place, don't pray against us. And they went to other flats. They knew it. But it's possible for you to be here and not realize the power of the church that you belong to. Demonic activities are everywhere now. We need the baptism of fire. A single person with the baptism of fire in a street becomes headache to all the witchcraft transactions taking place there. Why do we need this baptism of fire now? Sin, sicknesses, diseases, curses, untold problems are mounting and increasing daily. Daily. That's why some people will tell you the problems they are going through, you'll be shocked. I saw a man the other time. If it's in a room, if you switch on anything that is electrical, it's in trouble. If you switch on the fan, as the fan is turning, his head will be turning. If you switch on AC, as the thing is making, the body will begin to vibrate. Untold suffering in our world. We need this baptism of fire because poverty has become the national anthem of so many people. We need this baptism of fire. Because occultic and satanic power are now in naked display. They are displaying. Even satanic prophets are coming to the newspapers. They are coming to radio. They are coming to television. They are boasting. That's why one man with a tall cap on his head can appear on television. Say, I'm apostle so, so and so. I have seven wives. I want to marry one more. The more I marry them, the more the power increases. We are allowing them to operate. We need this baptism of fire. Because evil kings are uniting against us. We need this baptism of fire. Because a lot of people with very bright, colorful destinies have been buried. But with this baptism of fire in you, your life will begin to glorify God. Your life will begin to confirm his word. Your life will begin to show that God is with you. Your life will begin to bear witness that the risen Christ and his power are operating in your life. Your life will begin to bring salvation to others. Your life will begin to give fresh and greater, will begin to obtain fresh and greater anointing for the work of God. Then you become an instrument to destroy the works of the kingdom of Satan. You get power to overcome all the hosts of darkness. All the satanic plan over your life, over the life of others, you will help to dismantle it. The Lord will begin to use you to decrease the kingdom of Satan. You will become an instrument to bring open shame and failure on the work of Satan. You will become an instrument to remove the veil that Satan is using to cover so many faces. 
Then you begin to break bondages and declare liberty unto men. Then you can impact your generation with this fire baptism. Then you will begin to break yokes. You begin to enjoy the presence of God. Then your protection will be guaranteed. Then your peace too will be guaranteed with that baptism of fire. God does not joke with his men and women who have the baptism of fire. They are precious in his hands. How do you now enroll in this school? This is where you have to listen very carefully. And this is where we might need to continue this message some other time. How do you plug yourself into the socket of the baptism of fire? How will you get to a level where the demons will say, Jesus, I know. Eileen, I know. Duke, I know. Joseph, I know. How will you get to that level? How do you get into that baptism of fire level? Step number one. New birth. You must be born again. That is not negotiable. You must be born again. That is step number one. A person may stay in church for years and not get born again. It is possible to become a pastor without getting born again. It is possible to become a general overseer without, born, without getting born again. It is possible to become a church worker without getting born again. It is possible to be coming to a place like this for years and you are not born again. Those who are born again, they don't live in sin. Because the Bible says all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. They are not the kind of person who keep preaching. Don't, don't, don't commit fornication. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. They, they, they've gone beyond that when they are born again. They've gone past that level. Don't get angry. Don't lose your temper. They've gone past that level. New birth. Step number two. You must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. So if you are in this church, choir, usher, workers, and you are not speaking in tongues yet, you have not yet become one of us. You are a trunkless elephant. And that will not do you any good. First thing is to get born again. Second thing is to receive the genuine baptism of the Holy Spirit. Genuine baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you must pursue this vigorously until this becomes your Lord. We're talking about those who want the baptism of fire. Step number three. You must have a solid quiet time. A solid quiet time your quiet time or devotion time refers to your, the time of your daily appointment with God it refers to the time you spend time alone with God to read the word of God to study his word to seek his face in prayers and then to listen to him talking to you during the period of quiet time you shut out all distractions. There are some people who don't do quiet time. There are some people who do emergency quiet time. There are some people who do almighty formula quiet time. That is for three days, they don't do it, and they don't do one, they'll do a big one together on the fourth day. Those kind of people cannot receive the baptism of fire. God cannot trust them enough. During your quiet time, you sing praise songs, you worship, you thank God, you pray for yourself, you pray for others, you read the scripture, you meditate on that word of God. Then you spend time praying in tongues, pray in the spirit. After that time, you now spend time listening to God. What he has to tell you for that day. The quiet time. It is an appointment with God. It is something you must keep regularly. It's something you must pick a specific time for it. There, you must make it a priority. The best time to do the quiet time is in the mornings. 
Jesus prayed consistently in the morning. In Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Mark 1 35. Mark 1 35 says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. So Jesus prayed consistently in the early morning hours. Even the psalmist encourages praying in the morning. In Psalm 5 verse 1. Psalm 5 verse 1. Psalm 5 verse 1. Say, so give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shall die here in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And I will look up. So Jesus did it. The psalmist did it. In that morning, in the morning, the mind is still virgin. The mind is still basically free and empty. It can easily connect to God before the whole world wakes up. It does early in the morning. A lot of people are still asleep. And when you do it in the morning, it gives you opportunity to take over your day. That time early in the morning, your television is still asleep. Your phone too is still yet to wake up. You take charge in the morning. You charge your battery before you come out in the morning. In that quiet time. Unfortunately, the failure of most modern men starts very early in the morning. Because the devil is an early riser. Many of us need to pray about deliverance from the power of the bed. Deliverance from the power of sleep and slumber. When you really mean business, maybe you need to get an alarm clock. When that alarm rings, it's time for quiet time. Don't ignore it, you wake up. When you wake up, you sit up. Or you get up and pray. Don't remain on that bed. Get up on your feet if you need to. Walk around and pray to God. If you are still feeling sleepy, brush your teeth. Wash your face. So that you'll be able to observe this quiet time. All those who switch on the radio very early in the morning, you better stop it. All those people who complain, um, I have general body weakness when I wake up in the morning. General body weakness. Solution to that, that perhaps you should stop eating very heavy meals before you sleep. So that you'll be able to meet God very early in the morning. I'm praying for somebody here. That the demon that waits for you early in the morning shall be completely disgraced. In the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud and clear. So that is new bath. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's effective quiet time. Effective quiet time. The fourth thing. Is you must pray for a divine encounter. Divine encounter. All men and women who were useful in the Bible were those who encountered God. Beginning from Genesis to Revelation. Sit down and read it well. Those men about whom we are reading today, they were men who saw God. They had a divine encounter. Jacob had a divine encounter. He wrestled with an angel all night. Moses had a divine encounter. Take off your shoes. So because that place where you're standing is holy ground. He had an encounter. Joshua had an encounter. Isaiah had an encounter. Daniel had an encounter. Ezekiel had an encounter. All the apostles had an encounter. You need a divine encounter. You need a day in your life when you can say, I met God. As I'm standing there talking to you now, I can still remember when it happened to me. I remember that day. I didn't feel like talking to anybody again. I just felt like locking up myself forever, not coming out. When you have a divine encounter, then you understand what the book of Job was saying. He said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes see thee. I remember Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Elijah had a divine encounter. Elisha had a divine encounter. One minute that God meets you and talks with you, 
is better than all the garden of general of Asias in the world talking to you for three days. This is a strange generation. We are living in strange times. Very strange times. And if you must survive in these strange times, certain equipment are needed. They say it is insanity when you are doing the same thing. The same thing. The same thing. And you are expecting a different result. It's insanity. Get yourself ready tonight. We shall continue this message next time. Rise up on your feet now. Tonight is not a night to come and joke. It's not a night to feel sorry for yourself. It's not a night to pamper yourself. And it's not a night to be in a hurry to jump out from the presence of the Lord. People will come to where is a meeting and in a hurry to run away. Those people, they are not ready for, for baptism of fire. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here tonight and you are not born again, just raise up your right hand where you are. Say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, this coming Saturday is a palm of changes. And we're going to be praying from the book, our fasting booklet. Once we eat our last meal tomorrow evening, not breaking the fast till after the power of sin on Saturday. We will get there in the school of baptism of fire. What fasting does? But we can't get there today. Make sure you participate in that fast. There are prayers and there are prayers. The prayer of baptism of fire is not a gentleman's prayer. It's not a prayer you pray, your body does not know you are praying. Your spirit does not know you are praying. When you get to the level of the kind of prayer you should pray, you will physically feel that the hand of God is coming upon you. But to get to that level of prayer, you first of all arrive at a level where you could not be bothered what is happening to you. You get to a level where even your legs may be lifted up from here. When that happens to you, nobody needs to tell you stories. You yourself will know. And immediately that happens, the first thing you are going to notice is that your dream life will just change. The next thing you are going to notice is that anyone who opposes you will be destroyed. They will be ruined by the power of your God. Because it says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Those without baptism of fire could be wasted by the enemy at any time. So with a loud voice, with a voice that is ready for the rain of power to fall, please let your voice roar like fire and like thunder. You will shout this loud and clear. Holy Ghost fire! Your voice is not loud enough. The voice is still not loud enough. Baptize me! In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth. That's why Jesus brought you here. We are here for a special encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> Just warming up. <laughs> warming up, warming up. When the fire strikes you, if there is anything in your life that has been pushing the anointing away, it has to give way tonight. Some people are just standing like wood. Hey, and you want baptism of fire? Some are talking, we cannot even hear what they say. Holy Ghost fire! Incubate my life! In the name of Jesus! Jesus, 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 the power of God in the name of Jesus.
Move, 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 aha, aha, somebody is breaking through. Jesus, Jesus, aha, he's coming upon you now, now the power of God, now the power of God, so, he's moving me around, he's moving me around, he's moving me around, he's all over me, he's moving me around, the Holy Ghost fire moving me around. That's a fire, that's a fire. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Papata Casapola Kayabo Shenterabaka. Bana Cantara Capola Cateraba. Enough is enough of powerlessness. Aha, aha, aha. Aha, 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 aha. Papola Capola Basatendeca. Yes, 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 yes. This is not a night to negotiate. There must be no negotiation. Aha, aha. Holy God's fire. You could make my life. 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 I'm moving close. I'm moving very close. Bakate satenda kayaba. Ribo sapiale katanda. Aha. With a loud voice, you are going to shout, Holy Ghost fire. 21 hot times. The louder, the faster the fire will come upon you. Open your mouth and call it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Fire. Fire. Aha. 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 Yes! Aha, 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 aha. Bakapata Satyala! Enough is enough of powerlessness. Enough is enough. 21 times. Shout Holy Ghost fire again. Holy Ghost Yes. You can't hide. The fire is exposing the serpent. And the serpent is coming out. Palakatasataba. Ribo Saponda Kayabo Shenteraba. Say this again. Holy God's fire. Incubate my life in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare. Incubate. 
commit my life. He 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 commit my life. Papanta kasapola kaya mo shente rabaka. Bana kantara kapola katera ba. Aha aha aha. Aha 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 aha. Papola kapola basa tendekea. 